My name is Dr. Amr Mabrook, Professor of Plastic and Maxillofacial Surgery Department. Uh, today we are going to talk about cleft lip and palate and cleft patient. This is the normal anatomy. There is a columella with the filtral columns, the cupid's bow, vermilion roll, and the wet vermilion. And there is the dry vermilion. Classification, we have either unilateral, bilateral, complete, incomplete, cleft palate, uh, could be complete or incomplete, isolated or syndromic, and cleft lip and palate together. This is a cleft lip, this is a complete cleft, and this is incomplete. The complete cleft lip, cleft alveolus and gingiva, cleft anterior palate, primary palate, up to the incisor foramen, and severe nasal deformity. The incomplete cleft lip, there will be milder nasal deformity. It may have a notch in the alveolus, there is a seminal band, and there is incomplete cleft lip. The cleft palate, either it is related to the incisor foramen, the primary palate is anything in front of the incisive uh, foramen, the secondary palate is anything behind the incisor foramen. This is a cleft palate. It's a bilateral cleft lip. Prolabium and premaxilla are jetting, bilateral cleft lip and palate. There is a collapse of the lateral segment due to cheek pressure. The incomplete cleft palate and the unilateral complete cleft lip and palate, complete cleft palate and bilateral complete cleft lip and palate. If we understand these pictures and these diagrams, this will help us very much to understand the anatomy. There is collapse of both lateral segments of the palate due to cheek pressure. The premaxilla is unable to move in its, in its right position. There is, it happens between the six weeks to gestation and uh, six almost to nine weeks. This is the embryology. Proposed migration, uh, as you can see here. the embryology and the genetics and the treatment we restore the levator palatinae muscles link the muscles are abnormally inserted in the in this area so we have to correct this abnormal insertion completely dissecting it and we divide these layers into three layers an oral layer of mucosa a nasal layer and the muscle The farlo I don't like very much. It is uh, taking uh, both uh, layers like this, the plasty, the treatment sequence of the cleft, uh, complete cleft lip, and the incision and in taking the uh, nasal mucosa like this. The surgical aims we reposition the ala, we restore the nasal floor, we lengthen the columella. Then send the medial lip, reconstitute and restore and align and realign and reconstitute more. This is the different technique as it's seen. It is applying of triangular flaps. We bring tissues that are puckered over here, completely dissecting them and freeing them and bring them to the midline. This is a millard, which is a rotation flap. Tennyson is much easier to reproduce. We do these triangular flaps. And the uh, techniques of the cleft palate, we have the phone length and peck, two flap palate plasty. The velum is the soft palate. Why does uh, velopharyngeal incompetence occur? Because there will be no closure in this area and therefore uh, the valves or the vowels will escape and will not be able to produce intraoral pressure. The lateral incisor is absent in 70%, the canine tooth is absent or abnormal in 15%. The canine tooth can be successfully erupted through the cleft ones. The cleft alveolus is bone grafted, implants and orthodontics are needed. Uh, the maxilla and the mandible, there is higher prevalence of class uh, 3 occlusion, maxillary retognasia. The maxilla is underdeveloped, 
Growth restriction is highly correlated with surgical techniques and can be corrected by maxillary advancement. These are the immediate results. The scar will fade. Long term, this is a famous movie star and you can see that he is totally restored. Uh, we are also going to mention and touch the craniofacial malformations. We have the craniosynostosis, the craniosynostosis syndrome, the mandibulofacial dystosis, and the hemifacial microsomia. Uh, this is important for you to know just in the knowledge that when there will be uh, uh, the craniosynostosis happens when some of these uh, sutures unite prematurely and therefore there will be uh, intra uh, development of intracranial pressure if it is all happening together of this of this uh, ossification of these uh, sutures or if the suture is ossified in one area then there will be bulge in an area and no bulge in the other so we have the sagittal the unicronal the bicoronal the metopic the uh, most common is the sagittal biggest differential deformation of uh, and these are the trigonocephaly you can see here the ossification happened in these sutures, so the brain pushed in this direction. Scaphocephaly, the uh, uh, union has happened here, and therefore they were pushing upwards. And you can see the projection here. The craniosynostosis syndromes are associated with mid-face abnormalities, associated with finger toe malformations, and other associated malformations. We have the Crozons, the Eberts, the Pfeiffer, uh, the Munich syndrome. This is the Crozon syndrome. Eberts, Pfeiffer, and mandibulofacial dystosis, whether these are Treacher Collins syndrome or Nagers. And this is the Treacher Collins, it's an autosomal dominant variable expression. The zygomatic usher, arch, masseter, mandibular side of mouse variably are affected. Of course, this is a mocking. Uh, he is not a uh, Richard Collins. <laughs> so, uh, I think this will be all. What we have to know and understand about cleft lip and palate, I've just given you an idea uh, and when to repair and how fast is the repair should be done and it should be uh, managed as early as uh, possible. And of course, the three months uh, duration and the six months duration.